welcome back to another episode of Coffee Chats with Kat. I'm so excited that Hope is here. Hope is one of my closest friends in the industry. So selfishly, this is super fun to hang out with her. But I also am really excited to talk about what we're talking about because it's not something that's talked about a lot. Or I feel like it's mentioned in like Facebook groups or like in DMs because people are stressed about it and thinking about it. But there's really no space to go to talk about moving and moving your business physically and like what that looks like. So Hope, super pumped that you're here. Thank you so much for doing this. Um, I know we have a lot to talk through, but before we dive into the nitty gritty of it, I would love for you to just introduce yourself, tell people where you live now (laughs) and all the things about your business. Yes. Okay. I'm so excited to be here. As Kat said, we are business besties in real life. So I, this is just so fun for both of us, I think. Um, And I'm really excited about this topic because as Kat mentioned, I recently moved from Northern Virginia. I'm now in Charleston, South Carolina, um, which is like just my life dream. I still can't believe it's real. Um, but I moved at the end of July. So I am still in the height of like transitioning my business and doing all of the things that we're going to talk about today, which is kind of a unique perspective. Like this isn't something I did five years ago. This is like literally me doing it right now. Um, so it makes it actually really fun for me to talk about too. But just for some background, I began my business when I was 17, when I was a senior in high school. Um, and I, or sorry, a junior in high school. And throughout those two years, built my business, went full time right out of high school and now have been a full-time photographer for almost seven years, which is crazy to me. Um, And I photograph weddings and high school senior portraits, but the majority of what I do now is actually education. So um, I speak at conferences, I host workshops, I have online resources for photographers and small business owners. um, And I also host a mastermind for more advanced level business owners to scale their businesses into passive income and things like that. So um, I do a little bit of all the things, but that's kind of the the nutshell. Yeah, you're not busy at all. It's fine. No, it's, no, it's great. <laughs> oh my gosh, I love it. So, okay, can you tell us? So you said it, I remember it was summertime because you moved in July, um, mm-hmm. and so it is really unique because you are still going through that transition phase. Yeah. What were, can you talk a little bit, like when you were gearing up for the move, like what were some things either like just fears and insecurities you had around moving the business? And then also like maybe some practical things that you did when thinking about making the move. Oh yeah, absolutely. So I think that it's so funny because the Instagram perception of my move is like just so cute and exciting and fun. But the reality of the move was absolute insanity because my family, so my entire family moved, which is a detail some people don't realize. Um, So my parents moved, my other two siblings moved, um, our two dogs moved, the whole family's here. And so (laughs) I was living, or I was living alone in Virginia, but I would stay with my parents often. We only lived 30 minutes away. And the conversation of us moving began in like the early springtime, they started talking about the possibility of moving to Charleston or just moving in general. And I immediately like freaking out because my dream has been to live in Charleston my whole life. Um, but we, there were so many things that had to fall into place for it to become a reality. So I would say the conversation started in like late February. So actually probably earlier than, earlier than the spring. And we didn't know that we were moving until early June. So from late February to early June, there's all this craziness happening behind the scenes of me trying to figure out, okay, what in the world am I going to do to be able to move my business? But I can't tell anybody until June. So what can I practically do that's actually helpful before the world can know. Um, and what in the world do I do with like my whole life? Because I had my own house, my parents had their own house. Um, and there were just so many things that had to fall into place. So it was a lot of balance. It was a lot of balancing emotions of like excitement and getting our hopes up, but also wanting to put our trust in the Lord that like, if our house in Virginia doesn't sell, we literally can't go anywhere. So this is truly like not in our hands, not in our control at all. And that was the most stressful piece because I, so as we got closer, we toured homes in March. Um, we found a home we fell in love with. And so we put our house up for sale in April. Our house didn't sell until late May. So for two whole months, we couldn't put a down payment on a house in Charleston. We couldn't do anything because we were waiting for an offer on our house in Virginia. And so for two whole months, I'm in this place of, okay, I think in a few months I'm going to be living in Charleston, but there's this possibility that I'm not. So I don't want to market my business in Charleston and everything fall apart. And then everybody in Virginia be like, oh, well she's gone. So can't book her anymore. So it was just this really strange balance. And so 
Um, I had to take some leaps of faith and do some projects and do some marketing things with hoping we'd end up in Charleston, but not really knowing if we would or not. So one of the things I did was in May, um, again, we still had no offers on our house. We still were completely clueless if it was going to happen. Um, But I am a speak it to life type of person. So I was (laughs) feeding life into the concept of moving. Um, So I actually booked an entire film crew, not film crew, but a filmmaker to come to Charleston with me um, and film a program promo video and set up a styled shoot and network with vendors and do this whole thing so that I had a video and content to share to announce that I was moving. Um, Because this is a lifelong move for us. We knew that if we were moving, we were going to be here for ever, if not for just a very long time. Um, And so I knew that I wanted it to be a big announcement and build a lot of buzz around it. So um, the first thing I did is I did that and we came to Charleston. It's very expensive. Um, and again, it was like, I could have been throwing thousands of dollars down the drain. I didn't know. Um, but we came here, I set up a styled shoot and did a whole wedding styled shoot with a ton of vendors. I photographed a senior here. Um, I reached out to like a rental car company because I'm so extra and I rented like a light blue convertible so I could, <laughs> so I could drive it around. And I was also like, Oh, it's networking. It's fine. But, um, I just did a ton of networking and I created this amazing promo video and then Josh turned it around in like a week and then I could not share it for like a month and a half um and it was the most painstaking thing I've ever done um but long story short eventually mid-June we finally got an offer on our house and that was when I had to be like okay I have to hit the ground running and start actually marketing now Um, so the first two things I did just for like a practical perspective, the first thing I did, um, is I contacted somebody to completely revamp my SEO on the back end of my business. Um, I knew I wanted to outsource that process because I am in no way a professional at SEO. Um, but I knew that my entire back end of my website and blog needed to be redone. And so it was the very first thing I outsourced. Um, and I completely optimized my website and my blog and even my Google, my business, all of those things for Charleston. Um, and then the second thing I did is I started geo tagging and hashtagging the living crap out of everything related to Charleston. Um, I researched all the high schools since I photograph high school senior portraits. I researched all the venues. I researched all the planners. Um, and I just started following, commenting, interacting with, um, tagging all of the things that I could find related to Charleston. Um, I started reaching out to local planners. I started connecting with people in the area and just making myself known in the area before we ever moved. Those were the first two biggest things I did. That's awesome. It's so smart. I remember in the process when we were talking and you were like, SEO, I need to like fix all of this on the back end. Um, and so I think that that's such a tangible, like practical thing that people can do um, when they are moving into like physically moving to a new location is utilizing Google and like putting that um, as like a strength of your business versus feeling like you're still going to be popping up in a completely different state where you don't want to do that anymore. Right, exactly. And that's part of why I was willing to put so much money into this idea of like the style shoot and the promo video and all those things, because I knew I could take that one trip to Charleston and make that into like five Charleston related blog posts that would really build out my Charleston like keywords and things like that on my blog. And then if you look at my blog still, I made all of the top posts in the header of my blog Charleston related so that if anybody were to like randomly land on my website, um, they would be like, oh, she's in Charleston and not think Virginia still. Um, and I also forgot I did this, but I also contacted my website designer and we did a revamp of my site as well, um, to reflect a more Southern brand, to reflect a more Charleston client, um, and to just kind of like revamp everything to give it a new face and a new name. So it was also, it went along with the new location. Yeah, that's awesome. Did you find that, um, it was difficult thinking about like the Virginia weddings that you already had on the books or like, did you have a lot of those on the books and like figure out the logistics of that? Yes, that was probably the hardest part logistically for me because I had, I don't remember the exact number. I had over 10 weddings still in Virginia once we moved. Um, and so that was an expensive piece of it. That was a logistical piece of it. Um, and that was also like an emotional piece of it for me because I moved. So I moved, um, the last week of July, we moved into our house the first week of August. And then every weekend, except one, um, from the middle of August through the end of October, I wasn't in the state of South Carolina. Um, So I was traveling and then sometimes I had conferences in the middle. So I'd fly to Virginia for a wedding on the weekend, fly to another state to speak at a conference, fly back to Virginia to another wedding and then come to Charleston for like four days just to leave again. So it was exhausting. I booked 19 flights um, in that like period from 
Yeah, from August to December. And obviously I paid out of pocket for all of those travel expenses because my clients that had booked me in Virginia booked me before I ever decided to move to Charleston. So those expenses weren't their responsibility. So um, that was another not so glamorous piece of the move is I had to really plan that out um, and make sure that I prioritized taking care of those clients. So I notified them before I ever announced I was moving to Charleston publicly. Um, I reached out to anybody that was on my books for anything to make sure they knew it was not going to affect them. Um, and I also had to make a I am not a spreadsheet person, Kat. You are the queen of organization <laughs> and spreadsheets. I would truly rather die than create spreadsheets most of the time. Um, but I had to create like so many spreadsheets. I had to book so many hotels, flights, and just yeah. all my second shooters had to be recoordinated. So anyway, it was craziness. Um, so that like, was probably one of the hardest parts. Yeah, but I think it's so good to hear like you you thought about your clients, right? Obviously, like you weren't just gonna be like, okay, peace out. Like I'm going to Charleston, like have so much fun and like canceling weddings or, you know, losing out on that. Like you were proactive and that's helpful for anybody who has a move on the horizon of being very vocal with their clients and making sure that their clients understand what's coming, understand the effects that it has or doesn't have. Like for you, it was like, hey, this is happening, but like, I'm still gonna be there. Don't worry about it. You don't have additional fees to pay for it. Like just being right, super right. upfront with them will just add on to the client experience and make them love you even more when you are, you know, working with them on that process and, and going through the move. Right. I totally agree. And it's so easy for that to get overlooked when you're excited and overwhelmed in the midst of the process. Like when I found out we got an offer on the house, the first thing I wanted to do was post the video and like tell the whole world I moved, but I had to make sure that I was prioritizing my business and my clients and the people that were already on my books. And so that's a really important thing to keep in mind. I'm glad you asked that question um, because you really do have to take care of the people on your books before you tell the world or announce it to anyone else. Yeah, absolutely. So now that you've been in the new state for what, like six six months or some, yes. something like that. I'm doing like, it's hard to do math. Okay. Um, now that you've been there for a little bit, how are you feeling now with like the service based side and like either wrapping up client, like Virginia clients, and then, you know, can, hoping to continue to book like South Carolina clients. Like what is that looking like? Yeah. So the service based side of my business is probably about 40% of my business offering at this point. And so I knew when I left Virginia, I was going to have to make up some of the income I would normally get from service side um, in like a passive income education online side of my business, because I expected a major dip in bookings because for yeah. seven years I built my business in the same market. So to just drop everything and leave, I knew that there was going to be a dip and I was okay with that. Um, so I am in the year of 2020, I am probably going to shoot less than 10 weddings. Typically I shoot 10 to 15. I'll probably shoot eight to 10. Um, and a good 70% of them are in Virginia. Um, and I'm totally okay with that. Um, what I did is as soon as I moved, I had three weddings already booked in Virginia. So those I'll just pay out of pocket for those expenses. Um, the second that I knew I was going to move, I changed my website over to reflect that I was a Charleston photographer and immediately made two separate wedding package guides. Um, one for Virginia brides, one for Charleston brides and Virginia brides started to pay a travel stipend. Um, so that way I knew that any Virginia brides from here on out would cover those expenses for me. Um, so now anybody that books me out of state pays those expenses, which means I am booking less out of state, which is completely right. fine. Um, and anybody that pay, obviously books me in state doesn't have to worry about that. And so, um, I took a hit and I, again, I'm going to shoot what last weddings this year, but I'm doing a lot of different things to hopefully actively grow. So then in 2021, it'll flip and the majority of my weddings will be local. And then some will, some of my weddings are always destination. So that's not unique to me. Um, right. I, I shoot a good, like 20 to 30% out of state every year anyway. Um, and so that part's not unique, but I'm hoping that it'll kind of start to lean more towards the majority being local. Yeah. Smart. It's good. I think advice for anybody to remember that like you have to be realistic about this and you right. enter into this knowing like, okay, uh, even with updating SEO, even with a promo film, even with the strategies you did on your blog of like having those header images or the header posts, like being about Charles, right. like, there is just naturally going to be a dip. And so we just, that's not a Debbie Downer thing. That's just like being mm -hmm. realistic about, okay, I know that there's going to be a dip, but this move is worth it in the long run. So you started working on things that would give you like the long-term success that you wanted, right? even being proactive and thinking through. And I remember when we were brainstorming about this, like in our mastermind, but like thinking through, okay, what can I do to offset the fact that I'm going to make less revenue wise and my right. business from weddings and I still need money to survive and I still need to pay my bills and I still need to do these right. things. So like, what can I do in my business to make up for that is so smart and strategic of you. 
Thank you. Well, and I think it's so funny too, because that dip in bookings is with seven years of business under my belt and 50,000 Instagram followers, right? Like when I moved here, people kept reaching out to me and they were like, oh my gosh, how many Charleston weddings have you booked already? And I'm like, oh, zero. Thanks for asking. <laughs> like there's, there's not like, I, I just, I think that people have this misconception that if you have a successful business, you can just like drop everything and go anywhere and people are still going to book you. And that's just not, you have, you truly have to be realistic. And the reality of it for anybody is that there's going to be a dip in bookings and it's just so funny to me when people ask me, they're like, oh my gosh, how many Charleston brides do you book? I bet you're so booked up. And I'm like, you're funny. Like, good one. Um, because I mean, it's just natural for literally anybody and everybody. It would be nearly impossible to move to a new state and have a full calendar booked. And so um, I just think it's a funny misconception that I try to debunk because I think that everybody needs to have a realistic expectation of what it looks like. Absolutely. And it goes back, I've talked about this on a, with a couple different chats. Like we always, everything goes back to Instagram. I feel like, you know, we like love to hate Instagram, <laughs> right. but it's true. There's like this perception mm-hmm. of, oh, this perfect life or, oh, she just like moved and it like worked so great. And she didn't have, like, nobody knows all of that back end work that you're right. doing or the fact that like you did plan on bookings to be low. And so you were actually pursuing other things. And it's important for us to just talk about that and be able to say like, well, it might look really glamorous on the feed, but this is the reality of like what's going on and like what I'm working with right now. Absolutely. And that's like the only reason I even mentioned like the Instagram followers in the seven years is like, I think that people just look at that and it's like, It's a, um, what's it called? A vanity metric thing that like, oh, she must be doing great. And I mean, the reality is that there's a lot of strategy and business that goes into the fact that I am doing okay financially since I moved. Um, but it doesn't just mean that it like magically falls in my lap, which I think is just, it's just funny to me that people believe that, but they do. So I am glad you even asked that question and brought it up because I think that everybody needs to have a period of time where they just realistically prepare themselves for a move like this. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think that's so smart. So what about the digital aspect of your business? Because if there are some business owners out there that I I think one of the things that we love about being more digitally based than service based is the idea that we can anywhere there's Wi-Fi, like I can work and like we can pick Mm -hmm. up and travel or we can pick up and move, like do that. Have you found that to be true in this case and that like digitally it's been good or have there been pitfalls with that too? So I love this question because I love the digital side of my business. You you know this, but I geek out about like launch strategy and all of these things and email marketing and just the whole digital side of education. And for me, I knew the second that the, the move was confirmed that there was going to have to be some changes made in order to increase income on that side, right? Like if I'm taking a dip in service, that needs to meet in the middle somewhere. Um, and so for me, I worked with my team to figure out how we were going to increase my course income without having to launch a brand new product, right? Like I didn't want to have to just drop everything and launch a brand new course because I have three signature courses I've been selling. They've been selling well. I didn't want to like, um, not lessen my brand or like lessen the quality of something, but I didn't want to try to rush something just to make more money. Um, and so instead of doing that, we figured out a strategy Mm -hmm. to, um, incorporate like quarterly sales for my courses and incorporate, um, some other like additional income from like, uh, affiliate programs and things like that. Um, and we started to, I started to really try to, I tried to keep up my weekly YouTube series. It didn't work really well for me. Um, but instead those quarterly sales picked up and the biggest thing I launched was my mastermind. Um, I knew I wanted to launch an additional piece of education because again, I knew just like I wouldn't be making as much money once I moved to Charleston on the service side, I wasn't going to be as busy on the service side from a time perspective, right? Like I'm going to have a lot of time freed up now that I'm not shooting every single weekend and portraits all throughout the week. And so I need something to fill my time. And I knew that I wanted to launch something related to a next level business owner, because like I said, I love the launch side, the email marketing side. Um, so I worked with you guys in the mastermind. Kat was in my mastermind, not in my mastermind. We were in a mastermind together um, <laughs> for 2019. And so I worked with them and our, our business coach to brainstorm on what I wanted that to look like. And I launched that um, late in 2019. And so that has been the biggest thing that has kind of taken over um, the cost of my mastermind actually replaced what I normally make from wedding photography in a year. Um, and that way I knew if I didn't book a single wedding in 2020, um, I would still be making the same or similar to what I made in past years, um, which is such a blessing and such an awesome project that I truly just love so much. And, um, it, I'm lucky that I was able to launch one thing that was going to replace that income, but I knew something had to be done. that was different. Um, and that was the thing that I launched that was different. And, um, so that has been the biggest thing I've been focusing on since I moved. And that is completely digital. Um, it's all over email, Voxer and calls, just like 
like this one. Um, and so it truly can be done from anywhere, which is again, just such a blessing um, and why I love the digital side so much. Yeah, it's awesome. I think that this is this whole conversation. Well, yes, it's all about, you know, moving to a new state. It's also a lesson in like diversifying our income and knowing right. that like the to have the freedom to travel, to have the freedom to move and, and to take those risks and to really like cultivate the life we love and cultivate like you've been right. dreaming about Charleston literally your whole life. I know you said that, but like, it really is true. Like you have been like dreaming about this moment forever. Um, so for you to be able to say like, yes, I can grab at this dream. Like I can make it happen. It, it came down to diversifying your income. So mm -hmm. then when one took a dip, others could ride up or you could bring in new offers and experiment with things. Um, right. so building a brand that allowed you to then diversify. So I feel like that's just a really good lesson for everybody listening. Like if you just have one revenue stream, that's where this can be tricky. Um, because, it, it's just hard. Like it, it's, you never know what's going to happen in business. Um, and so to have multiple revenue streams that you can lean on when seasons are lower, um, is really, really smart. And also, like you said, for, for your, this specific example with launching a mastermind, like that's a lot of time for you. So if it, you were, you know, working with as many weddings and as many seniors as you normally would, you might not have had as much time to pour into your mastermind group. And now you're like, now I have the time. So I want to do this because I have the time and I, I love this part of business and it's helping on the revenue. So it's like a win-win for everyone, really. It truly is. I mean, I'm not hosting a mastermind is, I, I mean, I'm finding it's truly a full-time job in itself because I am coaching 12 students who have unlimited access to me, um, which I love every part of, but I truly, like you said, would not be able to do it if I was doing the level of service and actual shooting that I typically do every year. So um, it was just the perfect fit, which was so nice. And I also want to touch on something, which is kind of like, we could take a hard left and talk about this for a whole video <laughs> if we wanted to, but I think the ability to diversify your income quickly also speaks to whether you've built a personal brand of people who really believe in what you're doing. And I think because I've built such a personal brand of people who've seen me dream of moving to Charleston and they've like, they related Charleston to me. Like when they think of Charleston, they thought of me, even though I didn't live here because it was on my website, it was in my branding. I visited so often every year. It's truly just been my favorite place that when I announced I was moving, there are people that are traveling. The majority of my portrait sessions I have in Charleston are people that are coming to Charleston just to get me to do their pictures because they love, they're so excited for me that I moved here and they just want to support that um, and they want to experience Charleston and they come just to visit and like see the town that I love so much and yeah. it's just it's crazy but I think it speaks to the importance and the value of building a brand and a following and people who believe in you and love you and are just excited alongside you when you decide to make some, a decision like this and drop everything and move um, it's just really cool to see how the brand I've built has allowed people to support me in that um, and it's just it's really, really neat. That's awesome. I love that so much. I know uh, we are friends. So of course it's been fun for me to like watch your move take place and like decorating and like all of the, like the fun side of it. But on the business side, this is just so important for people to be able to think through and understand that like whether they have to move because of a spouse's job or, you know, something's coming up and they, it's like physically they don't have the option. Okay. So what can they do in their business to set their business up to be successful in any state that right. they're in? in and ha again having a diverse stream that yes you can still have service based but also having some product based some passive um will allow that move to just be an easier transition financially all the way around 100 percent. yep i love it so okay last thing then if someone is watching this and they are like they know they have to move to a new state whether it's like again they, they're like pumped to move or they feel like forced to move whatever the case they have to move to a new state um what is the biggest piece of advice that you would share with them um, oh, I love this. Can I give three? <laughs> I have like three. Okay, fine. <laughs> yeah, you're like, <laughs> you're like, give me one. I'm like, mm, no. Um, okay, so three things. Okay, so I mentioned this briefly before. The number one thing that you can literally do as you are physically road tripping from one state to the other um, is to follow and interact with on a genuine level as many vendors you, as you can in your new location. Um, I would just search like Charleston wedding planner, um, Charleston venue, Charleston blah, blah, blah. Um, and I would just follow and start commenting on liking interacting DMing replying to stories um, and just genuinely interact
interacting with these people so that my name was just fresh in their brain, um, that hopefully they would think of me if they had a project. Um, and I wasn't DMing them and saying, hey, let's get coffee. I'm new to the area because I know that they get those DMs all the time. Not that there's anything wrong with those DMs, but I just knew that that wasn't going to make me stand out in a genuine way. Um, I wanted to build a relationship with them if I could. So um, number one, Number two um, is to just get out and make content, like get out and photograph your friends, photograph your family members, um, walk around and get pictures of yourself taken, um, create content so that you have images to share of the new place that you're living um, so that people just really start connecting you with your new location. Um, Because I found that no matter how many times I talked about, oh, hey, I'm moving to Charleston, like I'd post a picture of myself um, against a white wall and be like, oh, I can't wait to go to Charleston. But people wouldn't mentally connect me to Charleston until I posted a picture like in front of Rainbow Row. And then they're like, oh, she's in Charleston now. Um, And so get out there and create content, take pictures, geotag, like Charleston, South Carolina, whatever your new location is, actually talk about it all the time. Um, There's a statistic that says that somebody has to see or hear something, I think seven seven times before they remember. Um, And so I felt so obnoxious being like, hey, moving to Charleston, guess where I'm going? It's Charleston. Um, But I had to do it all the time before it started to stick and people started to like listen and understand. Um, So that's number two. Number three, which I think is the biggest thing that has helped me in a new area, um, which is going to sound just really crazy and simple to people. And I actually have a blog post that breaks down how I do this so we can link that. Um, But I, anytime I left my house, whether I was shopping, whether I was going out to dinner with my friends, um, whether I was just exploring and going to a meeting or like working at a coffee shop, I took an obnoxious number of pictures and videos and Instagram stories and content because I wanted to every single day just show on my Instagram stories that I was in a new location and that I was going out and like networking and shopping at this new store and trying this new restaurant. And I would tag everywhere that I went again, whether it was a shop, a restaurant, a coffee shop, um, like a food truck that was parked outside somewhere. Um, I would tag all of them and they would hope like ideally follow me repost my stories. And I would gain other followers in Charleston. Um, because these big businesses that have, you know, five figures of following are reposting my content. Um, and actually my favorite restaurant that has a famous burger, like DMs me all the time now and we're friends and it's like my <laughs> life goal. Like, I think I peaked <laughs> because this Charleston restaurant and yes, I, that's a burger. That's yes. Awesome. <laughs> yes. Um, so funny. So yeah, that's the biggest thing I did that helped me to create a network in Charleston and to actually build my following strategically without like buying followers or, you know, hashtagging the crap out of everything is truly just going places and tagging the places that you go and giving them the opportunity to share so that you're reaching other people's audiences that already have established businesses in Charleston. That's so wise. It's making social media social again, right? Like just like you said, it's not doing the like doing like going about like buying the new followers or going at it from that way that like we that's a whole nother topic of like why you shouldn't do that and all of that but (laughs) this is just making it real it's saying like I am a real person I moved to Charleston and I'm going to this target down the street or I'm going shopping at these stores like on King Street like wherever it is that like whatever it is that you're doing and that's what those places want to see that's what other people want to see so it's so smart of you it is. It's just, and it's so funny, the connections you make too. Like I went shopping at a boutique and I don't ever do, I'm not a blogger. Like I don't do Instagram try-ons of clothes or anything ever, but I did this one day because I was like, I need Charleston content. And this boutique had a really large following and they were really nice. And I met the people there. So I like did Instagram stories of me trying on the clothes and they reached out to me. And now every time I go in, they give me a discount. I've met the girls that work there. And one of them has reached out to me to photograph them for an event coming up. Um, and they see me out in public all the time and introduce me like to other friends. So it's just also a way to make genuine friends. <laughs> like I'm now friends with these girls just because I posted that I shopped at their store and went out of my comfort zone to try clothes on on Instagram stories. Um, So yeah, it's just breaking out of your comfort zone and really making it social is truly the most successful way you can use Instagram right now just across the board. Yeah, so smart. Hope This has been so good. I love that it wasn't just like move stuff, but then we were like, okay, Instagram, okay, diversifying your income, like so many different things that like go into thinking about moving your business or actually moving your business. So I really appreciate you sharing all of this with us. Thank you so much. Um, We'll definitely make sure that we link that blog for everyone too. Um, But please um, let everybody know like where they can connect with you and we'll link all of that fun stuff like in the description too for them. 
Amazing. So hopetaylorblog.com is where I have all of my educational resources um, and my weekly YouTube series. You can find all of that on my blog. Um, and then at Hope Taylor Photography is my Instagram. There's actually a Charleston highlight on my Instagram for my stories. So if you want to see examples of what I was just talking about, where I'm like going out and socializing, you can see that there. Um, and then I will give Kat access to my free guide. This is my most popular free guide with my five must have programs in my business. Um, some of them are Instagram related that'll show you how I make my stories really pretty. And then some of them are just business related, um, but it's my five must have programs for every small biz owner. So we'll link that below so you guys can get that free guide too if you want to get your hands on it. That's awesome. Thank you for sharing that with us. That's so of course. Cool. And covers, like you said, so many of the things that um, we were just talking about. So I love that. Yes. Um, all right, girl, thank you for doing this. You're the best. This is so fun. And everyone out there watching, thank you all so much. And again, we'll link everything in the descriptions. I appreciate you guys. Comment um, if you have additional questions for Hope or I, and we can talk through this. And I will see you guys next week for another episode. So bye, y'all.